Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black green aggro deck titled Fight Club. Although in reality it's more like a mono black deck, splashing green for primal might, X and a green for a sorcery, saying target creature we control gets plus X plus X until end of turn, and then it fights up to one target creature we don't control, and we can splash primal might pretty easily, thanks to the addition of Blooming Marsh in Kaladesh Remastered. So now we have 12 of these black green dual lands that will usually come into play untapped, and the reason we need all this black mana is for Phyrexian Obliterator, the 4 mana 5-5 five five Trampler, saying whenever a source deals damage to Fraxen Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. So this is also the reason why we're so excited about Primal Might, because if we fight an opposing creature, the opponent will have to end up sacrificing a whole bunch of permanents, and the bigger the creature we fight, the more permanents they will have to sacrifice. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we're a pretty typical mono black aggro deck. So at one mana we've got a bit of hand disruption with Thoughtseize, and some cheap removal with Fatal Push, although we're not the best at enabling Revolt. And then some nice aggressive one drops with Gutter Bones, a 2-1 that comes into play tapped and can be returned from our graveyard to our hand if our opponent lost life this turn. And Knight of the Avon Legion, a 1-2 that can pick up plus 1 plus 1 counters, and for 2 and a blank we can give plus 3 plus 3 and death touch until end of turn. Then at 2 mana we've got the addition of Scrap Heap Scrounger from Kaladesh Remastered, a 3-2 that cannot block but can also be returned from our graveyard to the battlefield, so nice recursive threat. And Gifted Aetherborn, a 2-3 with Death Touch and Lifelink, so also combines quite nicely with our Primal Might, as we can potentially gain additional life and thanks to Death Touch take out any opposing creature. And then at 3 mana, if we can enable Spectacle by making the opponent lose life, we can run out Spawn of Mayhem, a 4-4 Flying Trampler, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals 1 damage to each player, and then if we have 10 or less life, put a plus one plus one counter on the spawn. And then going over the mana base, besides our 12 black green dual lands, we also have 9 basic swamps and 3 copies of Castle Lochthwain, which can also draw us additional cards in the late game. So we do end up taking a bit of damage between Castle Activation, Spawn of Mayhem and Thoughtseize, so that's also where the lifelink from a Gifted Aetherborn comes in handy. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Kick things off with Thoughtseize, see what our opponent's working with. So it looks like a Gruul deck. So I could take the Elf, although they will be able to go Emissary plus Galia on turn 2. So maybe I just take the Burning Tree to slow them down. And then Fatal Push can deal with Galia or the Elves. Although we will probably play a Scrounger on 2. Yeah, I think taking the Burning Tree to slow down the Amber Cleave makes sense. And then turn to Scrap Heap. And then the second Thought Seize might take away the Amber Cleave. Uh, elves staying back. Do they have another one? If they do. Alright, so now killing the elves doesn't make a ton of sense anymore. So I could keep Fatal Push to kill whatever they end up Amber Cleaving if they run it out next turn, although I think I just want to take it away so they can't re-equip it afterwards. So we'll start by I guess attacking and then we can Thought Seize and take it from there. Alright, take Amber Cleave. And then I don't want my opponent attacking with three creatures, but uh, I guess we can wait until their beginning of combat in case they drew a second Galia. It's going to be Pelt Collector, so we want to kill Galia in response, so it doesn't pick up a counter. All right, so as the dust settles, we've got double Scrap Heap and Gifted Aetherborn, an excellent draw in this matchup. Opponent chumps. And now they're pretty far behind. They would need something like Questing Beast. That would be a good draw. This kind of looks like another Ember Cleave. But if they cleave, I would still kill the Elf and gain two. So I think that's okay. Okay. 
maybe just a stomp from Bone Crusher. They don't get to run out a giant this turn. Want to play out my land in case I draw a Castle Lockthwain next turn. So we can keep attacking. And another Aetherborn is excellent. Scrap heap we can get back right away here. Can do it end of turn. This would also be an excellent matchup for Phyrexian Obliterator. Smashing for three takes out Aetherborn. I'm not sure how my opponent is supposed to get out of this. I guess Questing Beast is still their best draw. Alright, smashing for two. But we can get it right back. And that should be game. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This ends a little bit on the slow side with double obliterator and no third land. Although Fatal Push and Aetherborn can keep us alive against an aggressive deck. And Aetherborn is pretty good at getting in damage to enable Spectacle for spawn. So I'll try it. Turn 1 elf, perfect target for Fatal Push. Alright, so it looks like maybe a mono green elves deck. So finding that third line is going to be very important. Elvish Visionary. And there's Primal Mites. Although sadly this turn we can only gutter bones really. I could Primal Might for zero to take out Elves, but I would rather keep it to maybe take out like an Arch Druid or something scarier. Steel Leaf. Cannot block that one with the Aetherborn. Alright, so if I attack with Aetherborn, they might double block with Elite and a Token and then trade for those. If I Primal Might for two, I would just trade for the Steel Leaf. I would really like to enable Spectacle for Spawn of Mayhem here. Yeah, I think I'll still attack with uh, Aetherborn here. And hope they just take it. And then having a 5-4 in play is going to be excellent once we drop Obliterator. Alright, so if my opponent has collected company, they might be able to give champion plus one plus one at instant speed, so I don't really want to block. Alright. I think I might even stay back with Spawn of Mayhem. Just to have an extra blocker in case they company into some good stuff. Alright, no company. Didn't seem like it, but can never be too sure. Alright, main phase company off the top. And yeah, this Primal Might is looking juicy. So they've got a 7 6 Steel Leaf. So if I Primal Might for 3, Obliterator doesn't even die. And our point has to sacrifice 7 permanents. I 
I guess their lands aren't super necessary now that they have an Arch Druid in play. And then... I think we can get pretty aggressive here. Probably leave the Aetherborn back. So they have essentially six mana here. And next turn they're just dead to the spawn of Mayhem. Alright, sweet. That was a cool one, managing to pull off the Obliterator plus Primal Might onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Turn to Aetherborn, hopefully turn 3 Spawn of Mayhem with Spectacle. And we're facing Goblins. So Prospector does make it so if we do find Primal Might, they can just sacrifice whatever creature we try and fight to prevent the Obliterator, making them sacrifice a bunch of permanents. And in general, I would say the Goblins matchup is probably not a favorable one. Rely pretty heavily on Thought Seize to take away Muxus, which can otherwise just win the game on turn 3. And don't have a ton of answers for Krenko. So, yeah, my opponent could just run out turn 3 Muxus if they have it. Just gotta hope for the best here. And there it is. Goblin Grandy. Alright, could have been worse. Finds War Chief Matron. Matron can find maybe a Krenko next turn. Although we don't have any interaction here. And there we see Krenko Mob Boss, which can generate a bunch of tokens next turn. Take six. At least Obliterator does a good job of blocking Muxus. Question is whether we attack with the Aetherborn or not. I think we should keep it back. Just send in the spawn. Now, of course, my opponent can just go wide with Goblin Tokens thanks to Krenko, which does somewhat negate the Obliterator's effect. Alright, opponent passes. Now what? I think I send the two Tramplers, keep double Aetherborn back, otherwise I might be dead to a single Gem Palm killing my blocker. Could activate Castle Lochthwain in a desperation attempt to find Primal Might, second so Primal Might for zero. Although I think the play is just Aetherborn. And a tapped Overgrown Tomb. So if they activate Castle Embereth, they can also just pump all their goblins. Although Matron might just find a War Chief. Yep. Cranko makes more tokens. And that should be more than enough. And had we left the Obliterator back, we would only force the point to sacrifice permanence after taking lethal damage, so it actually would not have made a huge difference. So yeah, still ended up being relatively close here against the Goblins with turn 3 Muxus. Could have maybe attacked that one turn with the Aetherborn to put my opponent a little bit lower, 
but I don't think it would have made a huge difference in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got some early interaction. Obliterator waiting for a primal might. And opponent on a blue tempo deck featuring double sailor, double opt brazen borrower. I guess brazen borrower is probably the most annoying card here. And then we've got Fatal Push to kill any creature they try and enchant with something like Curiosity or Curious Obsession. Not the best matchup for Obliterator, but it's still a 5-5 Trampler at the end of the day. Hit for two, play tapped Overgrown Tomb. Don't intend to Fatal Push a 1-1 Sailor since they have another one. Wait for them to maybe enchant their Sailor. Could have also played an untapped land in case we want a Fatal Push and be able to pay for Spell Pierce. That was definitely a consideration. Alright, so we could run out Obliterator. Pretty high likelihood that it gets countered. So I might just go Aetherborn, keep a Fatal Push so they can't sneak in a Curiosity or Curse Obsession. Yeah, that seems reasonable. And there's a Wizard's Retort. And then next turn we can Obliterate her and still keep a push. Because the way you lose against the Tempo deck is they get a foothold with a creature that's enchanted and kind of spiral out of control with a ton of card advantage. This probably gets countered too, so we won't be able to Primal Mites. Alright, it's somehow resolved. Now I could Primal Might for zero, although if they have another Brazen Borrower we get punished pretty badly. So I think we should just pass. It's gonna be a Cutthroat, fair enough. Still wait on Fail Push, not in a hurry. Take two damage, we're easily outracing Sailor with our Gifted Aetherborn. Alright, so the opponent's plan is probably to try and trade for Aetherborn using the Cutthroat. Now I could just Primal Might for zero main phase, let the Obliterator fight Cutthroat, and if it resolves we probably win. Although there's a lot that can go wrong. Um, could main phase Fatal push the Cutthroat, see what they do. Although if they can give it Hexproof, then I can no longer fight with Primal Might the way I want to. So there's definitely a lot to consider. The play could just be only attack with obliterators, see what happens. And not let them leverage cutthroats. And then I can just activate castle. And still have fatal push primal might. Right, second cutthroats. Sure, do we want a fatal push now? I think I still wait. Take it. So Castle's gonna cost me three life here, which is a little pricey, but I think still worth it. I just wanna be able to have Fatal Push as a nice cheap one mana instant. So how about we main phase Obliterator? Just to maybe bait out a counter spell. And then we get them with a the Primal Might. Resolves. 
I guess. Let's see. I could Primal Might with uh, Summoning Sick Obliterator. Although, I think we're fine just attacking now. And a Merfolk Trickster. So that's going to remove the Obliterator's Trample and Ability. Or I guess they could target the Aetherborn. Uh, they target Obliterator, so just going to be a 5-5 now. So do I want a Fatal Push? Cutthroat, I think I do. And then, if they want a double block, that's fine by me. They're just gonna trade. And then Primal Might, make them sacrifice two permanents is probably gonna be game over. Now, I could've maybe played it differently, so we were more likely to make them sacrifice four permanents if they left a 4-3 Cutthroat in play. But it just seemed pretty likely for them to end up uh, trading for my creatures, and yeah, as you can see, opponent sacrificing two permanents is already plenty enough when they're stuck on three lands. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand would need a third land, and ideally connect with Scrounger. A Yurion deck's not gonna have a ton of fatal push targets, but Thoughtseize is nice. I'll try it. And then if we can draw land in two draw steps, we'll be fine. Alright, so some sort of teamer elemental deck. Uh, Fatal Push can deal with Druids, so between Cavalier and Escape. Could also take the Red Swords, I suppose, and cut them off red mana for Escape, although that's a little greedy. Although I don't actually hate it, since... If we kill the Leafkin, we can strand them on very little mana. So next turn, probably Spawn of Mayhem, after Spectacling, and then turn after we can still kill the Leafkin before they get to 5 mana. So 4 mana, just puts Yurion in hand, that's fine. And we even get to play double Knight of the Ebel Legion here, which is going to be great. Alright, and so my opponent concedes before we could drop to... Knights of the Evan Legion, which we're both gonna pick up a counter, so yeah, nice aggressive start. Managed to kind of punch a hole in the opponent's game plan here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Um, sure. Not the fastest draw, but it still looks keepable. If we draw Obliterator, we've got the Primal Might to go with it. And we've got a nice aggressive creature with Scrancher and a good defensive creature with Aetherborn. Against Elves, I guess we can play Scrancher for now. Just more likely to set up a good turn 3 spectacle. So Shepard only a problem if they have a way to generate a ton of extra mana. If they have an Elvish Archroot, we can fight it. Could even play Aetherborn and then Primal Might to gain a bit of life, or we can Primal Might with the spawn to get in more damage. It's gonna be Paradise Druids and Lenor Elves instead. Ooh, and there's Obliterator. So if I take two down to 16, play Obliterator. Next turn my opponent could activate Shepherd, but that's gonna tap most of their creatures, so... I think we're fine to attack and obliterate.
and Primal Mind plus Spawn of Mayhem could also just be a lethal here. Alright, Castle gives him one extra mana, so they can activate Shepherd if they want, but it's not going to accomplish a whole lot. Instead, Scavenging Ooze exiles Crouncher, gains one life. That's a juicy target for our Primal Might. And an Elvish Clan Caller. So we could guarantee lethal by using Primal Might with Spawn of Mayhem, but that's not nearly as fun as doing this. And this might also be guaranteed lethal. Alright, sweet. Yeah, I guess my opponent has 5 toughness, so they still end up taking 9 trample. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Nice mix of interaction, some pressure to enable spectacle. Well, let's see what we're up against. A Catria Triome. I'll wait on Thoughtseize. It's going to be an explorer, so some sort of a ramp deck. Alright, well, there's only one choice. So it's going to be a while before they can escape Uro, but with two copies of Fabled Passage it's not going to take too long. And another explore. Yeah, that was a good draw. So, next turn we could already see an escape. Don't have the best way to enable Revolt for Fatal Push to take out Uro. Alright, so opponent's gonna have a 6 6, gain 3, draw card. And they appear to be playing a lot of colors here. Maybe this is a Niv Mizzet deck, although I typically don't see this many explorers in a Niv deck. Still no black mana. So not sure what the red is for. Or the white for that matter. Alright, so I guess I could just play another spawn and double block, although I can double block with gutter bones and spawn as well. Or I could just chump with gutter bones and then fatal push after revolt has been enabled. I see, so Genesis Ultimatum. What are they gonna get? An Ulamog, although they don't get the cast trigger on Ulamog at least. So just a bunch of mana. One card in hand, and Uro can draw another. So it's actually not too bad. Should be able to outrace Ulamog. And even with two more Fable Passages going to the graveyard, they wouldn't be able to escape Uru again here. Hmm. 
Now my creatures cannot block, so do need to make sure we don't end up dying to our own spawn of mayhem. So even if I take 12 down to 3 and take 2 from spawn, I wouldn't be dead. So I think we're good to go. So opponent needs some interaction here to stay alive, or a burn spell will do it. Another Uru to gain 3, so I'm glad I attacked with the spawn instead of staying back. And my opponent explodes, sweet, double spawn of mayhem gets the job done. So yeah, overall. Black Green Fight Club, a nice variation on the mono black aggro archetype. Primal Mind gives the deck a unique angle combined with Obliterator, even though it doesn't come up every game, it's just a nice tool to have access to to potentially go over the top of other creature decks. Overall, the deck's still gonna struggle against pure control decks where they don't have any creature for us to fight, even if Primal Mind can be used as kind of a burn spell that uh, can potentially deal additional damage, it's still not at its best against control decks where Obliterator is just a 4 mana 5-5. Five five. But yeah, the deck's a ton of fun to play, so feel free to give it a shot. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.